So Klaus, we have some seeds here. Um, not a huge choice in variety, it's really just called perpetual spinach, isn't it? Absolutely, never been bred or improved. It's still very variable. Yeah. Old type vegetable, but fantastic vegetable. Three plants will feed your family in spinach. I'd sow it around now, mid-April. Okay. And then I'd do a second sowing in June. Okay, Klaus, so show us how to sow the seeds. So we fill our seed tray again, nice and loose first. And then with a, just a big two, three taps to firm it in, cut the comp excess compost off, and then make holes in about two centimeters deep now because they're quite big seeds, so they can be sown a little bit deeper, two centimeters, fingernails depth. They're big seeds, so they easily put in one seed in each cell. When you're finished, you put fine seed compost, overfill it again, and then scrape it off. And that's it, that's ready. You just water it in gently. Don't overwater. Overwatering is just as bad as underwatering because the seeds may rot away. And that's it. So each seed you sow in there will make three, four, five seedlings. Yeah. And that's a problem because you need to thin them to one seedling. Yeah. So in true TV speak, here's one we yeah. made earlier. Exactly, like a yeah. cookery program, isn't it? <laughs> so see that here, that one was one seed, hinge it out here. So um, for our spinach, what, what, what sort of soil are we looking for? Really fertile soil. The more you feed them, the bigger they grow. So right, it's yeah. a greedy old plant. The other thing is you want to plant it firmly in the ground. Okay. Because once you start picking the leaves, it'll rock in the ground. Ah, right. So really you need to get firm planting. Nicely. Yeah. And what distance apart are we going to do it? Give it a good bit of distance, like a, a foot and a half. Mm. Okay. Between, and then we stagger it. You know, the next one would be here. Okay, now we, we have our perpetual spinach here. We're actually in my garden now. Uh, Klaus uh, munched his way <laughs> through all his, so we've nothing to film. But anyway, uh, we're here in December now, um, and uh, this is still producing some nice, um, really summery looking leaves. Really good, great plant. Pick from the outside and it'll keep producing in the middle. This will actually, well, it's not going to do much now for the rest of the winter, but it'll start producing again in the spring and we'll replace it then in, in, in April or May. But a uh, really great value plant, you can't go wrong. We're going to do beetroot. Beetroot's one of my favourites. Oh, it's, it's my favourite as well, Andrew. Yeah, and okay. even raw and grated with onions Perfect. in it. Really good, oh, isn't it? Yeah, really yeah. good. Grows well, looks beautiful, and it mm. also tastes delicious. So we've got some seeds here. How many would you would you suggest um, um, for your average size, size family? How many beetroot really should you sow? Maybe 20 would be enough to try out. And that'll only take a square metre of your garden, yes, you, you can think about it. Yeah, you can plant them very close together. They're good in a small space. Yeah. We've got the beetroot seeds here, Klaus. The beet family, slightly unusual seed. Very unusual, isn't it? Each cluster of seedlings has got many seedlings in it. If you sow one seed, you'd, you'll get three seedlings. What time of the year do we put it in? Late April at the earliest, and you, you can guarantee success. And then you could do a, a second sowing until, the late, until late May. Okay, yeah. You could sow them directly into the garden as well. Yes. Make a little furrow and sow the seeds in there. Yes, okay. Or if you plant them in here, sow them when they're young. Yeah. Okay, Klaus, so show us how to sow the seeds. So we fill our seed tray again, nice and loose first. And then with a, just a big two, three taps to firm it in, cut the comp excess compost off. And then make holes in about two centimeters deep now because they're quite big seeds, so they can be so in a little bit deeper, two centimeters, fingernails depth. They're big seeds, so they're easily put in one seed in each cell. When you're finished, you put fine seed compost, overfill it again, and then scrape it off. And that's it, that's ready. You just water it in gently. Don't overwater. Overwatering is just as bad as underwatering because the seeds may rot away. And that's it. So each seed you sow in there will make three, four, five seedlings yeah. and that's a problem because you need to thin them to mm. one seedling yeah so in true tv speak here's one we yeah. made earlier exactly like a yeah. cookery program isn't it <laughs> so see that here that one was one seed hinge it out here right Klaus, we're going to put in our beetroots uh, i know that we can either do them from modules or, or from seed but what's the best sort of soil that, that they're going to like 
Well, any reasonable soil, reasonably fertile soil will do for beetroots. You know, they grow anywhere. They're not really demanding plants. And then what time of year are we going to, should we be sowing them? Well, you can make an early sowing in April. Mm. Late April, I think, would be the best, or mid-April even. Yeah. And then another sowing in late May. Sure. And that, that will produce the beetroot for storage. So okay. the early sowing, you eat away with them throughout the summer. And the later sowing, you can store, store them. them over the winter. Yeah, and they store extremely well. So we'll, we'll plant them now very close, about seven centimeters apart and quite firm. Make sure that where the root ball is underneath, that that's firmed in. And okay. ignore the top. You know, many people keep pressing and pressing here. That, no, need. no, that's actually bad because you seal the soil off. Yeah. So keep that loose. Okay, Andrew, we'll, we'll sow seeds directly now. So we can either make a furrow with your hands but in case you don't want to get backache, you can just use a draw hole for that. And you, you might think it's quite deep, but I often think people sow too shallow and then they dry out. Then you need to clean your hands and then we'll sow the seeds one at a time. And the next step is just to close it up like just that. Gently raking it over there. Yeah, and make sure that, or try not to get big dry lumps falling on top of the seedlings. Mm. So it's nice and moist the soil, which is easy, but mm. sometimes you have dry lumps and if they fall on the seed, there's no seed chance. Can't get through it. Yeah. No. And then you finish up with uh, tapping it in. Okay, two weeks, it'll be all up. Yeah. 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 We have a little bit of uh, housekeeping to do. Uh, Abs- what, what are we doing? Yeah, we have to thin them. So we, we really need to remove all but one. So and I pull those out. Yeah, just leave the best. So if you want really, really big beetroots, you thin them wide apart yeah and if you want small ones you sow them thin apart okay. or you pull every second one later on for baby beetroot do, do we need to feed those well apart from the initial ground preparation where we added compost to it yeah. about one wheelbarrow for every five square meters nothing while the plants are growing okay it would be more detrimental now to put poultry pellets or another high nitrogen feed around it okay remember that that was the ones we planted from modules mm, yeah. a few months ago yeah. so they're starting to produce their roots now mm. what i would do now is i'd let them grow more till they nearly touch and then i would harvest every second one and exactly let the other one grow to a big yeah. big one there's one disorder you have to watch boron deficiency and you, you'll notice when the beetroot is looking very scabby and the leaves have lots of spots in it. And what can we do about that? Nothing organically, but you can go to a chemist and get borax. You, you need it like a milligram per garden, you know, it's, yeah. it's minute quantities. Okay, okay. Now we've got some beet here. <coughs> We're actually in my garden now. Um, Klaus has uh, munched through all his already. <laughs> so these ones are actually quite small. It's late in the year now, we're in December now. So these are well overdue and ready to come out. But look, they're still growing fine. Just give it a little bit of a twist just to break the root there. As I said, they're quite small beet, but uh, still very good. So I'm gonna cut one up, I'm just gonna show you. So now look at that. Look at the color of that. So I can't resist, I'm gonna have to have a slice of it. Fresh out of the ground. Mm. That is really good, really surprisingly sweet. Raw beet is much better than you think it's going to be. Wow, really good, really, really easy to grow. I highly recommend. The seed bed is nicely raked, very fine, and we'll make a shallow drill here. I prefer this um, draw hoe or onion hoe. Short turkey movements like that. And then we'll, we'll tidy them up a little bit by hand. That's perfect. So that's about two centimeters deep. It's probably deeper than what you'd instinctively do, isn't it? Yeah. But the reason really is that soil falls back again. I've seen many people making a little indentation like that and sowing their carrots in it. That's not really deep enough. Yeah. And that top surface will dry out so quickly and they might die. Let's start putting some in now. Uh, what time of year are we going to sow them? Yeah, the, the very best time, if you want to avoid the carrot root fly, would be on the 31st of May or the 1st of June. Okay. That way you avoid the carrot root fly, the first generation of them. If you sow them in late May or early June, they'll only germinate on the 14th of June, mm. 14 days later. And then that way you can avoid the first generation of the root fly. Okay. And you still get a fantastic yield. You take a few in your palm and grab a few in your finger. Slow motion back, rubbing across here, releasing one by one. So you just go like this. So that's what, about two centimeters? Yeah. 
But the more accurate you, you are, the less you have to thin. So you, you go through diagonally? It's a long swoop across and it brings the lumps out. So the idea is that we don't drop a lump of clay on top, on top of, of a top little of seedling seeds. because yeah. it wouldn't germinate. So once you've got, done that, you can tap it in a little bit. Good to see it's a nice contact with the soil. That's the bayonet uh, cloth, and if you sow them before the 31st of May, you absolutely have to protect your crop mm. with the material like that. Do you know, I would even go as far as burying the sites in a little bit, Andrew, just Nobody's to make sure, sure, really. Nobody's sneaking in underneath. Yeah. After sowing the carrots, they, they, they're coming up pretty well in the, in, in the required spacings. What work do we need to do? Generally, I think they're very well patched, and do you know why I'm so hesitant of thinning them or do anything with carrots right. so you attract the root fly. Okay, so any smell, smell of that, if you go around thinning your carrots now, yeah. they'll come from miles and find them and, and attack them. So I'd, I'd be quite happy just to leave them because I think the spacing is perfect. So okay. you know, I could thin an odd one, but I, I wouldn't risk and it. If you are thinning a carrot, are we breaking off the foliage? Are we pulling no, you'd, the you'd, carrot pull, you'd pull them out and yeah. the important bit is to remove them to take them in a bucket and put them into the compost container away from the garden. The worst would be to leave them here. And the other important bit is to thin the whole bed today, to the whole lot together. Invite your friends, your children and your wife yeah. all together and weed it as quickly as possible. Yeah. Ideally a windy day where the wind is taking the smell away. Smell away yeah. We seem to have avoided the dreaded root fly so Yeah, far, it, it really looks at, I mean, I had the cloche over it. Yeah, the signs are quite obvious. It's the purpling leaves. If yeah. the leaves, lower leaves turn purple, then you have the root fly. Will we pull? Oh, that lovely. Oh, that looks lovely, yeah. Beautiful. And see, I like that it's the right balance between top and root. Okay. And during the season then, do we feed our carrots? Oh, at all? not at all. Not no. at all. Keep them poor because you want the roots to find the nutrients. You want the roots to, to grow work. down, yeah. to work and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and grow. So you're eating a, a good mouthful of soil as well? Mm. Oh, it's very good for you. Apparently it has all those um, happy hormones in it. The soil does. Mm. And you notice they grow fairly straight and that's due to my peat soil. Mm. There's no obstacles really. Mm. And I didn't add fresh manure or, or any manure to it so that they don't fork, they grow straight Yeah, down. They'll be giggling all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> because Serotonin, isn't it? Serotonin. I feel so. better already. I do too. <laughs> Tomatoes are the most exciting crop you can grow. I think you should build yourself a tunnel or a greenhouse or buy one just, just so you grow can tomatoes. grow tomatoes. <laughs> and just so you can grow the sun gold tomatoes, all that extreme, which yeah, is the absolutely best experience you'll ever have. Tomatoes you buy in supermarkets are grown in straw bale cultures with mm. artificial fertilizers injected into them. Okay. So yours will be an experience. So what I do is I sow them into a pot first and then I break them out into and then put them into yeah, your, into, into your fresh place. compost, ideally potting compost, which is richer. So I I only got five seeds. Do you see that? Yeah. Each seed will make a plant, which produces could produce ten trusses of yeah. fifty tomatoes each. Yeah. Three hundred tomatoes per plant. So it's not really mean, Just from isn't that it? little fellow, yeah. We only leave them up as seedlings for one week. Okay. That's very important, and then prick them out. We okay. don't want them to the roots to grow together. So we cover that up to the top with compost and that really wants to go into a nice warm place now the warmest yeah. place you have the warmer it is the faster they germinate okay so 22 23 degrees okay and they'll be up within a week okay we have um some tomato sun gold um that you saw us sowing the seeds from that's perfectly rooted not pot bound yeah no soil falls apart anymore absolutely perfect Just ready to go to plant but uh, what we'll do first is See here, this little fella. Many people are a bit confused about that. Mm. But the general rule is always the one between the leaf and the stem is the side. Too, and they have to be removed. Every single week you remove them. And what you do is you just nip them. On bush tomatoes, do we have to do the same thing? No. Yeah. Okay. No, a bush tomato you leave alone. A bush tomato only grows to that height and all the side shoots produce fruit. So another little secret of tomatoes is they, they like to be planted deeper. So if, if you set, if you, if you repot that now, mm. we bury it up to here. So that's, look, that's potting compost now. That's slightly rougher. So, so look, that's quite deep okay, that's in the it, pot yeah. now. So put it in and then put compost all around it. 
and tap it like that uh, as you can. And that's it. Water it in a little bit and yeah. you can hold it like that for another four weeks, three mm. to four weeks. And of course we, we, we have a decent amount of, of compost. Yeah, so that's yeah. to feed it. Going so through. that'll be planted in me then yeah. into your tunnel or greenhouse. So Klaus, we're going to plant our, our tomato today. Uh, I see we have some pieces of string here and, and, and we're, going to, we're going to put the plant in. So maybe talk us through what we need to do. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's the simplest way, first of all, of, of training your tomatoes. I've mm -hmm. seen, I've tried bamboo canes and a lot, but yeah. once the tomato reaches the top, they just collapse. And right, every right. week you have to tie it on with string. It's just a nuisance. Okay. With the string, the tomato will grow up and we'll just wind it around gently. We'll see next time okay. we come. Yeah. So for, when we plant them, what we do is uh, we'll, we'll improve the soil a little bit. Just imagine a tall plant like that with mm. hundreds of tomato fruits on it. It's, yeah. okay. It needs more food. <laughs> the roots okay. grow all the way out. So it would be a disaster now to put them all into the planting hole. So we'll okay. sprinkle, we'll sprinkle them around here. And then I work them in a little bit. It doesn't matter if there's still some left on the surface, really. Tomatoes are one of the few plants that you can plant deeper, that actually benefit from planting deeper. If, if you look, Andrew, you can see little hair sticking out. I can see them, yeah. All around, and, and they'll form roots when, when it's planted deeper. Mm -hmm. A tomato produces side shoots. Yes. And every week we have to remove them. Okay. And that's absolutely crucial because if not, it'll be a jungle in here. Remember, tomatoes come from Mexico and they're rambler. They're, they're like our bramble. Okay. We don't want that. We want them to behave themselves and go straight okay. up. Now, the side shoot, a very simple rule, is always the one in between the stem and the leaf. It's easy to remove them when they're small, but when they're bigger. So try and get that habit bent left and right. Yeah. And just snaps over. Like this and that. Okay. If you just bend one way and if they're bigger, you'll rip. Okay. You, you've noticed that probably yeah. sometimes. So here again, left and right. Every single week you have to and do that. you have that. to keep doing that because as the plant goes All the way up. it's going to keep yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. Into the planting hole, you line the string, put your plant on it, you bring soil around it, and then don't just leave it loose like that. Firm it, picture where the root ball is and firm it in okay. like that. You don't want to compact that now, otherwise it can't, the soil can't breathe. Make sure that it's watered before as well, yeah, that okay. it's moist. So Klaus, uh, we have a beautiful plant uh, uh, here, and um, maybe you can show us just, you were talking about twining the, the young plant onto the, onto the string. How, how do we do that? Oh, it's, it's just so simple. Look, you, you just keep winding the plant around yeah. without strangling it, you know. The other thing we sh I, I tend to do is I remove the lower leaves as they turn yellow. So every week or two, I'll take one low leaf off it. So okay. next week it might be that one if it turns yellow. And that'll help a bit of ventilation. Ventilation, the and you get less white fly, hopefully. But see that that's a side shoot here, and this side shoot will literally grow two meters. So the one that comes out in the middle, here, yeah. yeah? So yeah. you turn left and right and you get it off. And now here, th that's a flower truss and it doesn't come out between the two. Yes. So it's quite obvious that that's not a side shoot. Yeah, and we don't want to take him off. No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. So the, the, the ones here at the top, Klaus, we, do we let that grow on a little bit? Yeah, until you really see that it's a side shoot. Yeah. So don't touch the really t the Just top to part. Sure. As yeah. It's yeah. So Klaus, we have our tomato plant and, and, and you've told us how to pinch out our, our, um, uh, our side shoots. So now, white fly um, in the greenhouse can be a problem, and, and other pests. What do you use? Yeah, white fly is a big problem. They're aphids, actually, and they were introduced from South uh, from Mexico. Mm. I have the solution now, I think, and it's the garlic spray. Right. Yeah. So it's concentrated garlic mixed with water. I buy it in a shop, but I'm sure you could make it yourself as well. Yeah. And every time I'm out here, I <laughs> sprinkle the leaves. And it's systemic, so that means the, the garlic actually goes into the, into the plant. plant sap. So yeah. that's all I need. Yeah, I can smell you know, the garlic. A tiny, yeah. tiny bit because it, it goes into it. And I do that with all the tomatoes and okay. lettuce, actually. It keeps the aphids away the, of the lettuces okay. as well. So when we're finished, you know, just loosen up the soil again and, and tidy it up. And the, the plants really thank you for it. That's my sun gold tomato. My yeah. Prime target, favorite. my favorite. Mm -hmm. So every week I was doing that to it, winding it around the stem gently. See, yeah. that would be a side shoot. Remove that. Remember, we've done that last time. Yeah. Left and right, little snap. To get bigger, you have to use a knife. You can see already the first tomato is forming. 
A nice mm -hmm. big truss here and there. So to drop, top dress the tomatoes, we'll use the poultry pellets. The poultry pellets that were composted with um, fresh seaweed. So it's wonderful. It has the trace elements and it has all the nutrients, the nitrogen that tomatoes need. And if you do that in the late afternoon, once a week, late afternoon is important because the plants absorb the moisture right. at that stage. They're before giving it out they, in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So that would be best. I think many people would overwater their tomatoes. Mm, okay. They don't need to be soaked all yeah. the time. So maybe twice a week a heavy watering them twice a week. would be fine. And then in between let them dry out just a tiny bit okay. before they grow. And when we're watering them, are we watering the foliage or do we want to water the base of the plant? Uh, no, you just want to water the ground. Keep, okay. So you, you just mist around the base of it. So Klaus, those tomatoes are look, looking really nice. They kind of look ready to go, are they? I'd give it another week and then from then onwards we'll have tomatoes right through the summer and autumn, possibly into November. Yeah, and there's nothing better than nothing. the taste of a homegrown no, tomato. Absolutely. Onion sets a real handy way to grow onions, really, isn't it? It's far easier, yeah, than modular trays. They take ages. The most common mistake is people just plant all any sets they can buy because they don't want to waste them. But you yeah. have to waste. So I'm just going to show you which ones are the perfect onion set. Okay. And there, there is one. See that? Onion set. That's the perfect onion set. Nice and round shoulder here. Mm -hmm. Lovely and firm. Yeah. That's the perfect one you could get. This one is more pointed. Can you see that? It hasn't got the round shoulder, it has okay, got... Okay, it's very tapered like so that. So that's more likely to go to seed. Never ever plant any that have that are soft or have a shoot coming out. Mm -hmm. So they, they've, even when they're like that, you might think you're, you're, you're ahead of yourself, yeah. but no, they're, they're bad. Forget it. Forget it. Really by selecting the best quality sets, you get the best crop. Yeah. So we'll just make a pile of good ones here under. If you just pick out the best really, just to show you how you can grow really good onions. Size doesn't matter as much. Even the, the bigger ones are probably less good than those ones. Medium-sized ones are better. Okay, Klaus, we're out in the garden now. We've chosen our onions, so let, let's, let's see how yeah. to plant them. Yeah, I mean, the, the easiest things ever. Mm. You just pop it in halfway into the ground, just like that, the just onions. Like that. 10 centimeters apart from each other. There's one thing to watch out for, though. The crows. Like birds, yeah. The birds. Yeah. Yeah. What, what can we do about that? You would have to put a netting over it. Okay, put to a little protect brush them over it. For yeah. three, uh, three weeks or so. Just until they root. Just until they root. At that stage, yeah. they'll be fine. 10 per meter, so that, that'll mean 30 onions in one meter. It couldn't be anything easier than that, couldn't it? Now, the spacing. It's interesting. If you look, there's some white spacing. That means that those onions grow a lot bigger. They'll grow a bit bigger, yeah. yeah. So if you want to impress your neighbors, just increase the spacing to 15 centimeters, okay. like you've done there. Okay. If you if you prefer small onions like that, you space them maybe seven centimeters yeah. apart, a lot closer. So spacing determines the, the final size, size of, the of, okay. of the vegetable. I never pointed out that you should plant them the proper way, that that's the top and that's the bottom, but it seems a bit obvious, doesn't it? There is a top and there is a bottom. Okay, I'm kind of peering at you through this uh, lovely, <laughs> <laughs> lovely dense foliage. But we got some onions here. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm thrilled with them. Yeah. Anything we need to be looking out for, um, pest-wise, disease-wise? Well, disease would be downy mildew, and maybe that little bit here okay. could be downy mildew. That's on the tips of of the leaves. And we get that in damp conditions. Oh. Damp, cool autumns or, or yeah. summers, but. They're so well advanced, you know, it, it couldn't do them any harm anymore. Mm. If it would be early, it, it'll be a problem. If the soil would stay wet now, I would be worried that the roots, yeah. the bulbs will rot. We so hopefully it, not. So if you stimulate your soil in the morning, the soil has all day long to breathe out and you yeah. open up the compacted layers okay. and that dries it out substantially. Mm. You can use it for the opposite as well if your soil is dry. Yeah. You do that late in the evening, just and before, it'll take in moisture. and it take in moisture. Right, Klaus, we're back at the onions now. Uh, they've all fallen over there. They look fantastic and look like they're ready to pull up. Mm. I presume are ready to go. Yeah, well, they look messy, because but that's normal. They're just dying back mm. now, and and um, they're lovely. I'm thrilled. So we thrilled just, we with just them. Pull them. Just, pull, just them. pull them up. Yeah. So once. Nearly th uh, three quarters of all the tops have fallen over. Yeah. That's when you know they're ready to okay. pull. Rub off the soil, take maybe the loose skin flaking wow, around. Look at that. So it, it'll dry nicely. And then 
because it's a nice day, we just leave them in a line. Never put them in a pile. I see this one here, I was just about to pull. That. Yeah, it's no good anymore. That's a bolted onion. That's gone, no. And what so happens, that's, that'll just be a hard... It'll be a hard, taste yeah, well. without the scales. So we keep them outside now until rain is forecast again. It shouldn't be long. <laughs> and then I move them inside. Right. So we'll plait them and hang them in the kitchen over the winter time. It's very satisfying, isn't it? To, it to know that you have your your supply of onions. You hold it together, yep. the string, and you open it up. Got it. Like that. Bring it up. And you grab And then the you middle. grab that. And then you have a loop. Okay, like so that. we have a little lasso then for the first time. Yeah. We'll, put, we'll have a nice face here, and then the, all the tails come Keep around the, the back. The back yeah. yeah, so I'll pass them to you. If you go around here, you put it through here. Yeah. And then wind it around and through the middle again. And then. Lovely. And the next week, you know, you place it nicely there. Very nice. Keep all the tails together there. And then you can just pull them as you need them. Do I just keep going up to the top of the string? Or? Oh, it might be a bit too heavy, Andrew. Oh, Lift it already. Oh, yeah. I think we do another there. three or so. You, okay. I'd rather have more. Yeah. Uh, more, more strings than too many on one. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, wow, look at these lovely golden onions. And when we put yeah. our sets into hanging up here, that's really exciting, isn't yeah. it? Fantastic. So something I got used to get confused about at the start, people talk about spring cabbage, summer cabbage, you know, wh what are the differences and, and when should we sow them? Yeah, well you get summer, spring, summer, autumn and winter. Yeah, yeah. It's, you could have it 10 months of the year in your garden. If you sow yeah. now, middle of April, if you sow summer cabbage, autumn cabbage and winter cabbage, yeah. all at the same time, okay. all today, you'll get them in succession. Okay. Yeah, so from one sowing, you'll have them ready from July mm. onwards until January the mm. following year. Mm. So they don't need to be succession sown if you choose the right varieties. Yeah. So the, the way we sow the seeds is we have a modular tray and fine seed compost. And then we fill it up by just rubbing the lumps away. It's nice and full. Overfill it first. And then don't compress the modules with your fingers. The only firming you need to do is two or three firm bangs and that'll settle the compost nicely into it. Of course, then we cut off the excess compost. We sow them about fingernail depth or about one and a half to two centimeters deep. So you make little holes, indentations into the cells. I find it the easiest is to put seeds onto a piece of paper and with a pencil, or pen, you put one seed in each cell. When you're finished, you put fine seed compost, overfill it again, and then scrape it off. And that's it, that's ready. You just water it in gently. Don't overwater. Overwatering is just as bad as underwatering because the seeds may rot away. And that's it. Probably about four to six weeks. All the cabbages, cabbage yeah. family tribe, you know the brassicas, so-called. Yeah. They're all the same. Yeah, They're yeah. all very quick to germinate within a week and within four to six weeks you can yeah. plant them out. But, uh, the, the cabbages are the one type of vegetable that will forgive you anything. Right. Any torture in the tray, you know. Okay. They are pot bound. Another vegetable might react by bolting or, yeah. or really being angry. But yeah. the, these ones are perfect, you know. They, they'll grow out of it in no time. We plant them in fertile soil up to their neck, up to the first leaf. We'll plant them now quite firm. And the spacing is about foot and a bit. The wider you space them, the bigger your head will be. I'm actually quite lazy, Andrew. I plant nearly all my different types of cabbages around now, end of May. Okay. That'll be the summer, autumn and winter cabbages. Right. And the winter cabbages, they just take a little bit longer to mature. Yeah. Yeah, the summer cabbages are planted at the same time, but they're already in August. Autumn cabbages in October and the winter cabbages in December, January. The Dutch cabbage, which is this red Dutch cabbage, a foot and a half right. is perfect. Yep. So size nine wellies will give you a foot and firm planting again. If you see that the, soil, the plant is struggling after a while, we'll top dress it with uh, poultry pellets. Yeah, sure. But it mightn't be necessary at all, but we'll watch it and see how it goes. First of all, it's the most beautiful plant, mm. isn't it? But with any brassica, you look at any holes in the leaves and they'll be caused by the cabbage white butterfly yeah. caterpillars. Yeah. So you just check underneath either a cluster of yellow eggs or the caterpillars. 
Cabbage root fly would be another one, yeah. And but you would have seen the plants dying already. Yeah. It affects them more when they're small after you've planted them and they're mm. still small. It's it's the, the fly of the cabbage root fly which lays its eggs at the base of the stem. And then as regards feeding during the season, do we need to Oh absolutely. They're greedy once we yeah. want the leaves to grow fast, so yeah. we sprinkle poultry pellets around yeah. us. Poultry pellets will last for about three months okay. and that's the time they'll keep they'll need it. It's just a top dressing class, isn't it? And then just yeah. maybe give it a bit of a ruffle in. A ruffle yeah. into the soil. And the rain will take the nutrients and release them on the cabbages. Yeah. Sometimes they can get a little bit leggy and then you can just earth them up like that, right okay. up to the growing point. And what kind of year would you expect them then to form a form a heart? Well they'll be ready now by October. Yeah. Yeah. And and they'll store for a good few months, two yeah. months at least, yeah. as a head. Now we're back with our red cabbages now. We actually had to replant um, because we lost a couple of our earlier ones. So they're quite small, but we're in December now and these are gonna be absolutely perfect for your Christmas dinner. You can see that it's hearting up nicely now. We've got a good solid head there. So we're just gonna cut through here. Now, as you can see now, that's, that's a lovely head. And what I love about red cabbage, I'm just gonna cut through this just to show you. Now look at that. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? Great for cooking, that adds a lovely red uh, color and texture to, to your plate. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, Klaus, so what is chitting potatoes? Chitting really means to get the green shoots. And that's actually gonna be the stem of your potato. Yeah, you I think was going to ask it. that. Yeah. So this is gonna be the stem. Yeah. So really the idea of chitting is you're just giving it a bit of a head start before you head put start, it in. Head start, absolutely. Ground. Put them in an egg box or somewhere and place that in the light yeah. on your windowsill. But uh, if you want to, in, to get a bigger potato, mm. what you do is you remove all the buds and leave just one. And then all the energy goes into producing a few big potatoes. If you have loads of shoots on, all that means you get a high yield of lots and lots of potatoes. Okay. The overall yield will be better if you leave them on. It's not necessary to chit, you know, if, if you need to plant them and they haven't got chits on, that's Just fine, you can still plant them. Okay. So you don't want the, the weak shoots because when you plant them, look what happens, they break, they break off. off. With potatoes, there are loads of different ways to plant them, but talk us through what, what your preferred <laughs> method is. Stick them in <laughs> as <laughs> deep as you can. Okay. And if you put them upside down or around, they'll still grow up. So you put your hand in as steep as you can, that's 15 centimeters. And as you move your hand back now, you slide the potato in, look. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and if you don't do that, the soil falls back again. Yes. And then you cover it up. Okay. Is, is there any you know, specific kind of preparation in, in the soil for potatoes? Yeah, well I, I dug it over and I added maybe three wheelbarrows of good compost. And was that done last winter? Or no, that was, that was done a couple of weeks ago. Right, uh, we put in a few potatoes there earlier on and they're coming up nicely now. And I use earthing up also as weed control. So I drag the soil from the path and cover the weeds which are there. So instead yeah. of having to bend down and weed them. But it also gives them a much better growing space and a better mm. yield. Yeah. So we've a lot of different potato plants here. So different plants and they look quite different too, isn't it? Yeah. That's the orla. And I'm going to start digging them now, yeah. from now onwards. Then there's two beds of Nicola, lovely salad potato, lovely, yellow, yeah. waxy one. Yeah, yeah. And then the healthy ones over there, they're called Sarpomira. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now is the time we have to watch out for blight, really. Yeah. There was loads of blight war warnings around already, and I always ignore them until July. Okay. It, it really is pointless to think about it earlier. It's the, the overcast, warm, humid day, you know, when midges are about. That's yeah, when you that's really perfect. panic right. about blight here. Yeah. Klaus, if we do get a little bit of blight, um, we can basically cut the foliage off and leave the tuber still under the ground. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll cut off the blight, actually. Or even less, you say, if, if there's spots on the leaves now, mm -hmm. remove that particular leaf when, okay. when blight appears. Yeah. When it's bad, then you cut off the whole leaves. Cut them right down at ground level and remove all the foliage. Leaving them in the ground without the foliage, they'll, Perfect. they'll build up a skin on They'll them, build right? a hard skin and they okay. mature fully. And then, I mean, at the earliest, two to three weeks after okay. you cut the leaves down, you could dig them for storing. And when you know it's blighted, it's a smell partly. Yeah. You could smell it in the air. Have you smelled a rotten potato? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's that sort of, yeah. 
So yeah. it's quite a sharp, quite a strong, back of the nose a sort of strong smell. smell yeah. yeah, and there's two ways actually of blight traveling. I, I told you already, you can travel down the midrib, mm. and you watch it today and then tomorrow and the day after again. And if and it spreads, it. then it's blight. Okay. Blight is very very fast. So within a matter of three four days, the whole plant mm. could be flat. But if if you have very heavy downpour, it, it down. washes down from the leaves, the spores down into the tuber. That's why it's so important to have a nice Rich, do you see that? Yeah. That so the water good. runs down onto the path and goes yes. away. Okay. See, that's a miracle. You put one tuber in and you get mm. 10, 15 yeah. tubers, massive ones if yeah. the conditions are right. Um, you, you don't need that many potatoes to feed mm. a family. We have seven in the family and we have four drills, one early, three main crops, and uh, they're about 12 meters long each. Yeah. So that's six, 50 square meters. Yeah. And that feeds, last year we had potatoes until late May. Mm. Fantastic, isn't yeah, it? Great. We had one month without potatoes yeah, in so June. You're pretty much getting the whole year round. Yeah. When you dig them, you really have to try and get every one out. Only dig out what you want for your dinner or for yeah. the week. It's and as long as, as long as you keep an eye on them and keep keep them weed free, important to get and the well air earthed up. around them. Yeah, yeah. Not an awful lot to do. No, fantastic, isn't yeah. it? And it takes a few hours to plant them. Klaus, uh, we're going to look at chilli peppers. Obviously, we have to grow them inside, but um, kind of real fun thing to do. I, I have a couple of the bushes on the windowsill, and they just look so great, and uh, great fun to use in your cooking. Wh what varieties would you recommend? Oh, there's so many varieties, and I totally agree with you. There's nothing more exciting than growing mm. chilli peppers. So I, I like a variety called Prairie Fire. Right, okay. It grows about that height, and it. Mm. last year I had three bushes, mm. and each one had over 100 chilies on it. Yeah. Great. So, um, how are we going to sow them? We'll yeah, I'd like to first. broadcast sow them in there early in the year. They're very slow growing. Mm. So February, March is the best time. They take a long time to germinate and the warmer they are, the better. Mm. So a really warm windowsill or a propagator like. Yeah. And set it at 21 degrees to come quickly. But okay, even so then really they'll nice take two weeks. Yeah. yeah. We'll fill them up, tap it and then level it again. Why are we broadcast sowing them in a pot and then potting them on yeah. later? They take ages to germinate, so two weeks from sowing to germination. We can put at least 10 to 12 seeds in there. So about two centimeters apart from each other. So that's about 12 seeds. The very important bit is though that you prick them out very early when they're still seedlings. Because if the plants get bigger and bigger, the, the roots intertwine. Mm. And by you easing them out, you lose a lot of root hairs. Okay. So. As, the smaller, that applies for every vegetable. The smaller they are, the better for pricking out. Okay. Now that compost is only designed for about six weeks of nutrients. I see, yes. Yeah. Perfect for your modular cells. But in a bigger cell, they'll yeah. run out of food. They'll have used so if you sow them in there, you get little seedlings coming after two weeks, wait for another week. So in week three, we prick them out. That means you hold them on the cotyledons, the seed leaves, mm. and ease them out gently and put them in here, mm. then they have a completely new lease of life in yeah. those, fresh compost, then they grow much better. So here's some we, 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 we grew earlier, as they say on TV, and these guys are a little bit leggy. So That's right, and you can really see, that's the seed leaves, the cotyledons. Mm. That part should be down there, okay. ground level. So when you prick them out, you can compensate by planting them a little bit deeper. So then when we, we need to plant these out into a bigger pot then? They have to stay inside and you can only grow them in a greenhouse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or in a, in a polytunnel. Each chili will produce so many chilies. It's the best plant compared to peppers. You know, you get an awful lot from yeah. them. Again, very simple. All you need to do is plant them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a small variety, they don't grow too big, so they, they don't need staking even. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you get probably get 50 to 100 chilies per plant. Variety. Yeah. Now you've already put in a little bit of uh, seaweed. That's right, it's all area. prepared. Yeah, so all make a planting hole, throw it in, and then firm it where the root ball is. Quite firm yeah. here. And then loosen the top. And the test often is to just pull it a little bit up just to see if it's firm yeah. enough. That's great. So all nice. we need to do is wait now for a couple of months. From about five plants, we have chilies throughout the year. Uh, it's May now when, when we're planting them. That's about yeah. the best time, really. The best plant, time. Right? Often they're available for sale in April and it's yeah. they don't like it. You know, they yeah. want the heat and, yeah. the, and the warmth and the long day length. They're flowering. Can you see that? Yeah. So that means we'll have a 
chilly there. They don't like too much water. Ah, right, okay. And what about, obviously they're in the glass house, but pests and diseases, do we have anything to... to They'll get affected by the greenhouse whitefly, okay. and like the tomato can get. Okay. So Same applies, I spray the garlic nettle spray once a week. Okay, and then chilies, do, do, they, do they need to be fed? Are they, are they quite a hungry plant? No, they're not yeah. really hungry. Yeah. They're, they're quite small, and probably if you feed them, you'll get less of a taste, less of a fierce fieriness. Oh, okay, of, of right. Now, we're in my polytunnel now. We have the chilies here. They're the same variety as we planted in, in Klaus's greenhouse, uh, Navajo. Uh, so they're a medium hot chili. So you can see we've done quite well here. It's very late in the season now. It's December now. So I'm going to be taking this whole plant out and any of the ones left here that are ripening up. They're nice and red there. Uh, I'm going to dry them in the kitchen. I'm going to pick one there. Beautiful colour, isn't it? I suppose you're going to want me to eat one. <laughs> Let's have a look. I'll try one. Good flavour. Of course, the, the, the chilli seeds are the hottest part of it, so if you want to not get too much, I'm going to eat this anyway. Woo! Well, for a medium hot chilli, that's pretty hot. Mmm, <laughs> getting a lot of heat off that now. But isn't it great? I mean, a lot of people think that you can't grow chillies. It, it's something for much, much warmer climates. But if you have a greenhouse or a polytunnel, they grow perfectly well and actually very easy, a lot easier than you think. So we're going to harvest these now and, and I'm going to bring them into the kitchen to try. Okay, we're out in the garden now and we're going to uh, sow some peas. Uh, we're going to direct sow them outside. Uh, Klaus, I, I've got some uh, sugar snap peas here because I'm a kind of particular favourite oh, of mine. Sorry, yeah. There's many seeds. First of all, I think we should clarify, there's three different types of peas. Mm, yeah. There's moss too, there's sugar snap, and then there's the normal garden pea. Mm. So the moss too is the ones you have flat. You eat the whole part when it's flat. The sugar snap, those ones here, you wait till the seeds inside swell up mm. and you still eat the whole part. And the normal ones are the garden peas, you just mm. take the seeds inside. Make sure that you know the height of your peas in order to give them the adequate, adequate support they need later on. Yeah. So you do need to find out how high they will grow. We'll just have one row in the middle because the climbing support we'll have later is a fence post and wire, yeah. chicken wire or sheep wire yeah. along. What you do with a hoe, that's a, called a draw hoe or an onion hoe. So you make a, a wide trench like that in the middle of your bed. Now with peas, you don't want to sow them all in one go. So you just sow half the amount and then two, three months later, you do the next half. Okay. So you get succession. Ah, right, okay. That's about three centimeters deep. It looks a lot more, yeah? Yeah. But that soil is above, it's you know, up, it's piled up and it's yeah. quite loose as well. Yeah, yeah. Put them in a, in a pattern like that every two, three centimeters. For a family of four, I would plant about five meters. And then again, in two months later, another five meters. And that should give you more than enough, even enough for freezing. Once that's finished, rake it level. Go diagonally this way. You go one swoop and bring it all the way gently across. That stops the big lumps, especially if you have a clay soil. And then we'll tap them in. Yeah, when they're just germinating, when they're sm small, there'll be lots of weeds everywhere, also amongst the peas. So I'll do something very cruel and people always get a shock. I'll put the rake over and rake right over the peas. Yeah. And they don't come out or don't get damaged. Mm. So gently run the rake over and that that's again the fall seed bay technique, you know, controlling the weeds before. Right, well here's the peas that we sowed earlier. How are they doing? Good, good, and I apologise, I should have staked them by now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, because they, they see the tendrils, they want to climb up somewhere. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what I'll do is have fence posts on either side yeah. and a chicken wire across. Across, yeah. yeah. You can't just use bamboo poles? or No, bamboo poles, uh, they don't climb up. What you could do is make a framework with bamboo canes, but mm. you still need some pea sticks. Yeah. And that means little branches of hazel or so, which are widely yeah. branched, and they climb up easily there. Yeah. I see you've earthed them up a little. But it also is good for weed control. You know, I earth them up and the weeds in between get covered up yeah. and uh, can't grow then. Right, I'm kind of meeting you across the garden fence here. <laughs> Close. But, uh, Unbelievably, these are the little peas that we saw. We put those time. seeds in magic, isn't it? Yeah, really uh, vigorous. So, is there anything we need to look out for? These look super healthy. Do we have any pests or diseases we should be? Not really. Not really. No, nothing at all yeah. whatsoever. 
No, the mice, I sometimes would go for the seeds. Yeah, but once we got to this stage, there's no problem. They should be fine, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't worry about them at all now. And what about, I mean, of course, uh, peas uh, fix nitrogen from the air, but do we need to feed them at all? No, no, no they're no. very happy. And you can no. see that they look happy too. Yeah, they look Feeding great. Feeding might be counterproductive now at this stage. Okay. Each flower will produce a pea. You can see the sequence here. You have the flower and then you have the tiny pea with the flower still attached and then the flower is gone and then they grow bigger and bigger. The one important bit with peas and beans in fact is that you harvest them regularly. Okay. So every single week you should harvest what's ready. You have to keep it, you have to peak greedy with your peas. Oh, okay. That's the only way that you have a longer season. If you forget, if you go away for a couple of weeks and don't harvest them, they'll stop flowering and it's then it's over. the end and it's all over. Okay. Harvesting them at the early stage, be careful. Two hands, yeah. hold it here on the stem and then Pull it and you have it nicely with the handle and a little crown. Mmm. Oh, Andrew, they're fantastic. Let's have a go at one of these. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> Standing out here in the sunshine with these crunchy peas. Can't get much better than that.